Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric, and today I wanted to go over a three-wire start-stop circuit. Now this is the foundation of all motor control. If you can understand this, it'll give you a good foundation to build upon. All motor control is based on this simple circuit. Now I've worked for a long time in the electrical field, and I've worked with a lot of electricians, and some guys are good electricians, but they get afraid of motor control. They're intimidated by it. Yet they could do a residential three-way, four-way switch without even thinking about it. But when it comes to motor control, they're scared. What I wanna do for you is to show you there's nothing to be intimidated about. This is all basically the same thing. It's all about switching. You're using switching to control what you want the circuit to do how you want the circuit to close, how you want that motor to be controlled on and off. That's it. Everything else is just an add-on to that. Later, you can install timers, you can install multiple start-stops, you can install all kinds of new controls. But without this foundation, it's gonna be really difficult for you. So today, let's get it right into three-wire start-stop motor control. So let me show you a three-wire start-stop. This is a board I put together, and it's a plexiglass board. And here you have a starter, a motor control starter, an overload. This is a breaker just to control our control power. And then you have the start button and the stop button. That's basically it. You have three wires to the start-stop. And now we'll get right into how this works, but I just want to show you, just want to go through this, you turn on the start button, it, the contactor closes, it stays closed until you push the stop button. If the stop button is pressed, it will not start. It'll only start if the stop button is not pressed. Start, stop. Uh, this is a really simple circuit. I wanna move to the computer. I'm gonna show you on the screen exactly what this circuit is doing, and then we'll come back to this display. Hey everybody, we're back here and we're at my computer and here on the screen, I'm showing you a three wire start stop circuit. Now this all originates from this bucket. This is a starter bucket. This rectangle right here represents a starter bucket. And here we have our 40 volt power source through a main breaker, which then feeds the top side of a contactor. Okay. This contactor has four normally open contacts and it's all controlled by this coil. When this coil is energized, all four of these contacts close. These three contacts, this, this is line one, line two, and line three. These three contacts feed this motor. They feed current to this motor. When they close, this motor is energized. This contact is our holding control contact. And for that to work, we have a second power source. Now, sometimes this is accomplished with a, a transformer and sometimes it's control. It's accomplished with an outside control power. Here, we're showing an outside 120 volt control power source. So we have our neutral wire coming down through our overload circuit to our coil. Our overload circuit is controlled by the three heaters. These are three thermal switches in the starter, in the overload bank of the starter. And what happens is when they get hot, if the motor is drawing more current than it should, these will get hot and this normally closed switch, you can see it's closed right now, will open. When it opens, the coil will lose its neutral. And then we have our power going out to our stop button, our stop button feeding our normally open control uh, holding contact. It's also feeding our start button. And then we have our start circuit coming from our start button back to the coil of the starter. Now let me energize this circuit so you can see what's going on. All right, so uh, here we have power turned on. Uh, here we have our fuses open, so no power is going to the switches right now. Our neutral 
is going all the way through to the coil, but nothing else is happening. So let's turn on our 480 volt power to our starter. And it's going down to the contacts of the starter, but it's not going to the motor because there are contacts are currently open. Nothing will happen if I came over here and hit the start, start button or hit the stop button. Nothing happens because there's no power. There's our control power is turned off. And if you notice, the start button is a momentary. As long as I'm pushing the button, the button is closed. The stop button exact is exactly the opposite. As long as I'm pushing the button, the button is open. This button is called a normally closed button. This button is called a normally open button. Okay, so let's turn on our control power. Our control power is now on. Power is energized. 110 volts is energized through the normally closed stop button. And that button is feeding our start button and feeding our holding contact. Now, if I push the stop button, we will lose power going through the stop button. But as soon as I let go, power is reestablished to our contact, to our contact and to our start button. Now this motor will not start until we press start. When I do press start, all these, this coil will be energized. All these contacts will be closed. And when it closes, this circuit will bypass our start button right here. So let's close. Let's hit start. Okay. I let go. The coil has remained energized because as soon as I hit start, this contact closed, which keeps itself on, it bypassed the start button. So I can come over and I can press the start button all I want. Nothing will happen. It's going to stay running until I hit stop. Once I hit stop, now I'm going to have to hit start to get this to work again. There you go. It's running. So there's only two things that can stop this circuit. If I lose power, actually three things. If I lose power in our control circuit, it'll stop. If I hit the stop button, it'll stop. And if the overloads trip on this starter, it will stop. The overload tripped, this overload circuit opened. I lost my neutral to the coil, which caused the coil to de-energize, which opened all the contacts, the motor stopped, as well as the control circuit stopped. So now I can try to hit start and it will not start until, until I reset my overloads. Now I've reestablished my neutral connection. I can hit start. The motor will stay energized. Now, this is what it looks like in the field. This is how you wire it. And I wanted to show it to you this way because I wanted you to see the bucket and I wanted you to see the three wires that are leaving the bucket, going out to the field, feeding the start stop button and controlling the starter. I'm going to show you what this looks like in a, in a ladder diagram, but what most people get hung up on, especially electric, when an electrician's first learning this and they get hung up on this is when you look at it in a, in a wire diagram, this coil, this contact right here, they don't seem to know what to do with that because it's confusing in a ladder diagram. Let me, let me show you what that looks like. Let's turn the power back on. We're going to go down to a ladder diagram of the exact same circuit. This is the exact same circuit we just looked at. You have 110 volts. Over here, you have a neutral. The 110 volts is feeding the stop button. Power is going through the normally closed stop button to the start button. And here's what I'm talking about. It also, it feeds the start button, but it also feeds the motor starters auxiliary contact, which is normally open. And then it comes back both from both places, from the start button and from the auxiliary contact and feeds the coil. When you hit start, the motor coil energizes, the motor contacts close, this auxiliary closes, which keeps itself on and you've, you've effectively bypassed the start button, keeping itself on. It'll stay on until you either hit stop or you lose an overload. If the overload opens, the neutral will be lost, which will de-energize the circuit, which will open the contact and it'll cause you to have to reset the overload and come back and hit the start button again. Really folks, that's it for three wire start stop. That's how it works. It's uh, really not as complicated as some people make it out to be. It's really, really simple. Now, if you want to excel at these things, start thinking about 
what would it, what would, how would you have to wire here? Let me move down to this ladder. How would you have to wire that ladder if you had two stop buttons, if you had three stop buttons and three start buttons? How would that ladder have to look to accomplish that control circuit? Uh, after that, you can add timers, you can add uh, horns to the circuit, you can add uh, indicator lights to the circuit, all kinds of things. But this is the basic three wire start stop that all motor control is based on. So if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, uh, leave, a dis leave a comment in the comments below. I'd be happy to demonstrate some other circuits that you're more interested in and we'll go over those. Uh, make new videos about those. So if you like this video, uh, hit subscribe. If you like it, you want to see more like it, click the like button and, uh, and the bell to be notified of more videos like this. And uh, until next time, have a good day.